Hey everybody, today is our part one of mechanics guides for Legends of Runeterra covering card powers and keywords, basically all of the cool things that different cards can do in the game. If you'd like to start putting these keywords and synergies together, then we do have a full card gallery and deck builder on our site, alongside a bunch of other things to sink your teeth into. If you aren't sure how the game works, we also have an overview kind of guide video that we released yesterday, which will be linked down below along with the site. Let's start with some of the more prominent keywords or effects, um, and they actually have tutorials within the game to teach you about them properly because they are that important. The first of these mechanics that we're going to go into is called Quick Attack. So while attacking, you strike before the blocker. From this tutorial, you can see center would be blocked and normally both units would die. The attacker would do damage to the defender and likewise. Because she has Quick Attack though, she strikes first, she kills the abomination and then she survives. Overwhelm is our next one though, so it inflicts damage beyond what would kill the targets to the enemy nexus. In this tutorial, it gives you various different puzzles to solve, using Overwhelm damage to be able to kill the enemy nexus in that turn. In this one, we use our Hopeful and we give it Overwhelm with our Burst Spell. Uh, we strike through the defender with our Whirling Death, allowing our Hopeful to hit the nexus, which takes it under 10 health and allows Darius to level up. This is when the Overwhelm on Darius comes in, so we use it to cut through the defender and finish off the remaining health on the nexus. Elusive is our next keyword, and this means that unit can only be blocked by another elusive unit. In this tutorial, we have two elusive units on our board. We have our amateur Aeronaut and our Daring Poro. Since the enemy has one elusive unit and one normal unit, they can only block one of our attacks, meaning we're able to strike the Nexus with the other unit. Next up, we're going to look at Ephemeral, and this is one of the coolest keywords in the game, in my opinion. So this unit dies when it strikes or when the round ends. In this example, we have five units. Three of them are Shark Chariots, and two of them are Caustic Cast. We attack with our Sharks first. Two are blocked, one attacks the Nexus, but still dies as it has the Ephemeral ephemeral keyword. We have nothing else to play, so the round then ends. Both of these units are going to die because of the ephemeral keyword attached to them, but they both do one damage on death to the enemy nexus, so we manage to win. Finally, the last big keyword mechanic that we're going to look at is Frostbite. So it sets a unit's power to zero this round, uh, which can be changed after. So the power goes to zero, but it can be rebuffed. In this tutorial, we use it to combo down our enemies. We use Frostbite on both enemy defenders, and then we cast Winter's Breath. That kills all enemies with zero power, and it allows our attacker to punch through for the win. We also have a ton of others that you're going to encounter as you play and you build through other decks in Legends of Runeterra. We're going to go through these in alphabetical order just to make it a bit easier to follow. And the first one then is going to be Allegiance. So when you summon a card with this, it gets its Allegiance bonus if the top card of your deck matches the same region. An example of this is our Vanguard Bannerman card. So it's from Demacia and it grants all allies plus one and plus one if the bonus is met. Next keyword we're going to look at is Barrier. So this negates the next damage the unit would take and it lasts one round. Bright Steel Protector is a pretty cool example of this. It's a Damascian card as well and it gives all allies barrier when you play or attack. Our next one isn't seen very often, but Capture is here. So a Capture card is removed from the game. It returns when the capturing unit leaves play. Detain is a fast spell from Damasia that actually comes from something else that lets an ally capture a unit. And then so when that ally leaves the board, it would come back out. Chandra is one of the more common keywords here. You can choose which enemy blocks your attack. So Thresh, for example, is from the Shadow Isles. And when you attack, you will drag a defender onto the board to block you. This actually goes into our next one pretty well, which is going to be a double attack for Lucian and Senna. They are the only cards to have this from the interaction between each other. Double attack means that units attack twice. The first attack is free and it cannot be responded to by the target. And the second attack behaves as a normal attack and the attacking unit will take return damage. Next up, we're going to look at Drain, which heals our Nexus for the amount of damage dealt. This is normally from a spell, so an example of that would be Grasp of the Undying. It's a Shadow Isle spell, a fast spell, and you drain three from an enemy unit. Enlightened is a bit different. It's a really cool mechanic. So you're enlightened when you have 10 maximum mana, which then triggers your other effects. We have a card called Feral Mystic, which is a 2 cost, 2-2 two, two normally, but if you play this when enlightened, it gains plus 4, plus 4 as well, so it becomes much more powerful. Next up, we have a kind of type of unit. So we have fearsome units. They can only be blocked by enemies with three or more power. Elise is a champion from Shadow Isles, and she is a fearsome card. She also has an attack condition as well, but this fearsome tends to be more a characteristic of the card itself. Our next one, Fleeting, is not a very common card. It more refers to additional cards created by another, but that new card gets discarded at the end of the round if they aren't played. So for example, Heimerdinger, the champion for Piltover and Zorn, when you cast a spell, you create a fleeting turret in your hand that can range from a 1 to 8 cost. In contrast to that, Last Breath can be found in a lot of different places. These abilities take effect when the unit itself dies. One of the first cards with this you're going to run into is Hapless Aristocrat. It's a Shadow Isles card. It's got Last Breath summon a Spiderling. Lifesteal is a pretty cool mechanic. It's a lot like Drain. Damage this unit deals heals its nexus by that amount. This is more unit focused though compared to Drain. Like Emerald Awakener is an Ionian card. It's a 2-2 that has lifesteal, but it also has an enlightened condition on top of that. 
Nexus Strike is a bit less common, but it is kind of self-explanatory. It means the effect triggers when the unit strikes the enemy Nexus. Kempong Pickpocket is a Piltover and Zorn card, and it will create in hand an exact copy of a random spell from the enemy deck each time you attack the Nexus. Our next keyword is Recall, and this is mostly found within Ionia. You return a unit to hand, and it removes all effects applied to it. These can be from spells or units. Uh, one unit that has it is Solitary Monk from Ionia. It has a Recall effect that when summoned, it recalls all other allies. Another more rare keyword we have is Regeneration, and that means the unit heals fully at the start of each round. Garen is a champion from Demacia that has this effect. It means that he can attack or he can block and recover damage taken, which makes him insanely useful. Strike is a bit different and will normally have an effect behind it, but to actually get that effect working, you need to deal damage to an enemy using that unit's power. Units with zero power can't strike. So for our Green Glade Lookout, which is an Ionian card, uh, when you strike, you reduce the cost of the most expensive unit in your hand by one. Stun is a little bit more straightforward. Uh, you remove a unit from combat. It can't attack or block for the rest of the round. This can be from spells or it can be from something like an Arachnoid Sentry that will let you stun an enemy when you play it from your hand. One of my personal favorites and a really cool concept is for our support. So attacking with a support unit will buff the unit to its right. This makes attack order extremely important. And for our Herald of Spring, which is an Ionian card, when you attack, you're going to give your supported ally lifesteal this round, which is the one that heals your Nexus. The last important keyword to cover is one called Tough. And this is one you'll mostly see in Demacian decks. It takes one less damage from all sources. Our Plucky Poro is a card from Demacia that has this keyword. And even though he is a 1-1, it'll need two points of damage to actually get through that toughness and to kill him. There are a few more that you might run into, but they're very self-explanatory. Like, for example, Can't Block. The unit can't block attacks when you're the defender. Legion Rayguard is a Noxus card with this effect. It is a one-cost unit, but it is a 3-2, which is really good, but he can't block. So it's a purely aggressive style card. That is going to wrap up the mechanics you'll encounter within Legends of Rune Terror. Let us know which of these is your favorite down below and make sure to check out our card gallery or our deck builder for more. As I said, if you missed our latest video, we have an overview of the game and tomorrow we're going to have part two of this going into all of the champions and regions in the game. But thank you for watching and see you next video.